All right. Well, I think we can go ahead and get started. Um, we've got lots of good information to cover, and I want to make sure that we have enough time to get to the um, Q&A at the very end. Um, so yeah, so we'll go ahead and get started with today's webinar. Um, hello and welcome everyone who's joining us live. And for those who will be watching uh, the recording, today's uh, webinar will be recorded and shared on the Sockness YouTube channel and website. Um, thanks for joining us for uh, our webinar, Charting Futures, Sockness Scholarships and Research Application Walkthrough. My name is uh, Emily Pavlik and I am the Student Programs Manager here at Sockness. Today, Elizabeth Johnson in this year, Native Initiatives Coordinator to Sackness Dish is not Nish. Adana and Lishanigi A. Kiani Nishla, Dots and Anjana Bashish Chin, Torachini Dasha Che, the Hola Dashanella, Akut Ao, the Nasta Nishla, Tota de Nasha, Ado Hosto Ishovan. Hello, everybody. My name is Elizabeth Johnson. I am the Native Initiatives Coordinator too at Sackness. Uh, I just introduced myself in the Nebizod or Navajo, which included my clans, and this is how we identify and connect as Dinep people. Um, let me go ahead and run through those translations really fast. So I am of the Towering House clan born for the Black Streak Through Wood people. Uh, my maternal grandfather was Bitterwater. Um, I'm actually originally from the Four Corners area. Farmington is where I was raised, but originally I'm from Tis Nespas, Arizona, and I currently reside in the Phoenix, er uh, Phoenix area. Well, before we begin, we'd like to start with a land acknowledgement. Sockness is a fully inclusive organization dedicated to achieving true diversity in STEM as the nation's largest multicultural and multidisciplinary STEM diversity organization. Sockness creates space where all members, volunteers, and partners feel they belong and can embrace their intersectional identities. Sockness is based out of California, which is the original homelands to over 200 tribal nations, bands, and rancherias of Native American and Indigenous people. We'd like to take this time to acknowledge the original caretakers of the land, which we all live and work, and honor the rich culture of the Indigenous people across the country. Um, in just a moment, I'll drop in the chat a link to nativeland.ca, uh, where you can learn more about the lands you reside in, visit, and are around. Well, today's webinar is an opportunity for us to share some great information, tips, and recommendations on applying for the SACNIS research presentation and travel scholarship opportunities for the SACNIS National Diversity in STEM Conference. We are going to get started today by discussing the SACNIS research presentation application, and we'll do a Q&A at the very end, but if you've got any questions that are coming up for you as we go through it, please feel free to use that Q&A feature and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll answer everything at the end. So uh, the research presentation opportunity um, at the Sackness National Diversity in STEM Conference equips young researchers with the skills and mentoring needed to be successful on your STEM journey. Accepted applicants have the opportunity to refine presentation skills, receive one-on-one -on -one mentoring and feedback on your research, and connect with a supportive community of peers, mentors, and role models throughout the NDI STEM Conference. Uh, the Research presentation opportunity is open to community college undergraduate and post -bac baccalaureate students for the poster presentation opportunity. Grad students can apply to give a poster or an oral presentation, but you have to select one. And postdocs can apply to give an oral presentation as well. Uh, now you'll see here we have some important dates and deadlines. Um, take a moment to review these. Right now, today, we opened the spring applications, which is very exciting. Um, we've listed both the spring and summer application deadlines. We do have two submission periods for the research presentation and travel scholarship opportunities. Um, but please note, the eligibility differs for each application period. Brings us to the eligibility information for the research presentation. Uh, applicants must be current SACNIS student level members or postdoc level members, at least 18 years of age at the time of the conference, and one of the following at the time of the conference. So as you can see, we do have two application periods, our spring applicants, which we're focusing on community college, undergrad, postback, grad students, or postdoctoral research. Um, we will be opening up applications again in the summer, um, but those ones are going to be for our undergraduate students participating in summer research. So highlight graduate students, postdocs, now is the time for you to apply during our spring application period. 
So next, we're going to take you through a little walkthrough of what the research presentation application entails. Um, so first things first, we want to know about your project details. At the very beginning of the application, you'll provide information like the title of your research, uh, the discipline and subdiscipline of the research you'll pr be presenting on. And side note, for some people, that may not be the major that you are currently in or what you're currently studying. In fact, we also have a resource right on the application where you can kind of um, get some more information um, and assistance for determining which discipline applies to your research. Um, this section is also where you will uh, confirm, you know, that you've read through our permissions and acknowledgments, like your permission to publish the abstract online and um, acknowledging that you've agreed to the uh, Sackness Code of Conduct. Make sure that you take the time and read through this section. It's really important. Next, we want to know about you. So this is where you can provide us some more information about the author and the contact information. Um, you can also provide us any information about co-authors or mentors uh, who provided assistance with you on, on your research. Um, but remember, whoever is submitting the application has to be the individual who will be presenting the research at, uh, at the conference. We do not permit group presentations, and we don't allow for you to swap out um, with a different presenter. Whoever's submitting it has to be the one presenting. Finally, the last part of the application, you will provide us with your abstract um, in 250 words or less and in full and complete sentences. Um, you can put your abstract right there in the box at the bottom. You can copy and paste it from a Word doc or type right on in there. Um, but a couple of reminders. You do not need to include um, the title of your abstract here in this text box. Since you've already provided that to us earlier in the application, we don't need it listed again. You also don't need to provide us with the co-authors or mentors. You also gave that, us, that to us already, so we don't need that again either. And we don't need any subheadings. We really just want to see the bulk of your uh, information right here. But we also provide you with a low versus a high scoring example um, that you can kind of compare and contrast and, and make sure that you're on the right track with your abstract information. In addition to the research presentation application today, we also have the travel scholarship application. SACNIS provides conference scholarships that include funded travel, lodging, and registration for undergraduate and graduate students to attend the SACNIS National Diversity and STEM Conference. Accepted awardees will also have the uh, will have access to specialized pro specialized programming to welcome and orient you to the conference in October. And we've got a QR QR code right here. Please feel free to scan this with your phone um, for more details on what the scholarship entails. I'll give you guys a second just in case you want to scan that real quick before we move on to the next section. Um, and we'll provide some more of this information later as well. You can access all of this on our website too. Um, and just to look at these uh, travel scholarship dates in, um, in addition to what we saw earlier for the research presentation dates, you'll see that they're pretty much in alignment. Spring applications open on the same day for the travel scholarship as they do for the research presentation for both the spring and the summer. However, you'll notice that there's an additional date here in this section, and that is for the letter of recommendation. We give your selected recommender a little bit of extra time um, to get that letter of recommendation in. Uh, so they have until the 31st of March, whereas the application itself and all other components must be submitted by you by March 29th for this spring. And you'll see we kind of follow that same pattern um, for the summer too. Now on to everyone's favorite part, the eligibility components. Um, so our travel scholarship eligibility is the same for both spring and summer application periods. You do have to be a current SACNIS student level member, at least 18 years of age at the time of the conference, an undergrad student interested in pursuing a higher education in a STEM field and enrolled in a two to four year college or university, or a graduate student enrolled in a STEM program. However, we do not accept students enrolled in a post-baccalaureate program or postdoc fellows. All right, so we'll go ahead and walk through the travel scholarship application now. Um, so similarly to the research presentation, uh, first things first, we want to get to know a little bit about you. Um, so this is where you'll provide information about you, your contact information, and your email address. And just a note about that email address that you're providing, make sure it's one that you have access to year round. Um, if you're participating in, you know, a program right now that you'll lose access to that email address, make sure you, you pick a different one because we'll be sending you important information and updates. And that's true for the travel scholarship 
and research presentation application. Um, don't uh, speed through this information too quickly either. This is important for you to go through each section here um, and, and make sure you're answering everything um, accurately. Um, the next section that we move on to is the travel scholarship acknowledgements and policies. Um, another area that we want to make sure you're taking the time to read through, clicking on those important links. Um, this is where we have um, our specific policies for the travel scholarship. The travel scholarship is grant funded, so there are parameters that we want to make sure you're paying attention to in there. And one of those questions you'll notice is about uh, biomedical and behavioral related STEM fields. For this question, um, we, we don't need to make sure that you are enrolled in any such fields. We just need to make sure that you are willing to learn more about them. The next section of the application is about your history with SACNIS. Are you a chapter member? Have you received a travel scholarship before? You're not required to have been a chapter member or to have previously received a travel scholarship in the past, but we just want to know a little bit about you here. Um, but if you are interested in starting a SACNIS chapter or joining an existing, existing one, we encourage you to check out the website here on the web, uh, right here on the slide, www.sacnis.org side slash chapters for more information. Well, this is what we've noticed a lot of kickback whenever we're doing our applications. A key component in your application is going to be your letter of recommendation. We only need one, and we strongly encourage you to reach out to your recommender to make the request as soon as you can. We encourage your recommender submits early so that you can avoid any technical issues. But if you are having a hard time finding or getting a hold of your recommender, you can always change the information to someone new in the application. Now I'm gonna go over some do's and don'ts. Uh, when making the ask for your letter of recommendation, do select someone who knows you. Identify somebody who can speak to your achievements and goals. Also, in your request, make sure to provide your recommender with information for the purpose of your letter. This is just so that it makes it a lot easier for them to draft that letter for you. Uh, another quick question is, do they know about NDI STEM? If not, open up that conversation about how it would be beneficial to you and your academic career journey. And finally, do ensure that you've provided your recommender with relevant information, like the deadlines. Oh, and the details of what is needed in the letter. We don't want you to wait till the last minute to identify your recommender and ask for their support. This only hurts your application because they won't have enough time to write the letter or they will end up going back to a template, which again is not a strong letter recommendation. But Beware, don't be demanding when making the ask. Remember to be respectful and courteous. This is a favor that you're asking. At the very end, don't forget to thank your recommender and inform them of the application outcome. Doesn't matter if you received it, doesn't matter if you didn't receive it. They wanna know in order to also recommend you for next year if you apply. Uh, we encourage you to scan the QR code on the slide here as well, where you'll find more information about making the ask and even a template letter for asking an instructor or a professor. And the next part of the application is the statement of purpose. So after you've made your request for the letter of recommendation, now you're gonna tell us a little bit more about what it is that is drawing you to the SACNIS conference. Um, this is a 500 word max essay, which is going to address your research interests, the importance of research to you, um, your academic and career goals, and why attending NDI STEM um, may help you achieve them. Describe why you would benefit from receiving the travel scholarship to attend the SACNIS conference here too. Remember, be specific. Don't be too vague in your explanations about your research, but also try not to get too technical, especially as you're getting into some of that scientific jargon. And provide personal examples. This is about you and the impact that NDI STEM attendance will have on you. Finally, the last part of the application is the unofficial transcript upload. The unofficial transcript is used to confirm your eligibility for the travel scholarship. It's a requirement of the travel scholarship that you're either an undergraduate student enrolled in a two-year or four-year college or university or a grad student for fall 2024, which is at the time of the conference. You can provide an acceptance letter if you've been uh, accepted into a new program and you'll be transferring or other proof of matriculation to prove your enrollment for fall 2024. Make sure your document uh, has all of the required information. Um, and once you have this, you can save and finalize your application.
All right, next we'd like to um, pivot to the Q&A portion of today's webinar. Please, um, I'm seeing some questions here already in the Q&A, but please feel free to continue to drop um, drop more of those questions. Remember to be polite and mindful and respectful in the chat. Um, and then again, if you haven't already, please feel free to share uh, your institution or location when asking um, when asking any of your questions. All right, let's take a look here. I've got some questions here um, already that we had ahead of time. Um, thank you to those who submitted some questions ahead. Um, so what makes an application stand out? How can I make my application stand out if I'm a returning research presenter or if I haven't presented research before? This is a great question. Um, well, Elizabeth, I can answer a little bit of this and feel free to chime in whenever, but what makes your application stand out is really going to be with that statement of purpose first and then the letter of recommendation second. So for the statement of purpose, rem uh, remembering to be... Um, you know, specific with your with your information, not being too vague as you're explaining what your research goals are and and what is of interest to you, um, and providing personal and specific examples. Really, we want to know about you. So, if you are just being kind of vague in your explanation about the research that you're interested in, or if you're not really providing any personal examples, your application won't stand out as much. Um, and then second with that is that letter of recommendation. So making sure that you know somebody like Elizabeth mentioned, um, they, that they know you and that you know them well, and that when you're making the ask, it's not somebody who isn't familiar with your background, with your goals. Um, that's going to be huge. This uh, bounce, uh, bounce off of that. And this goes for any scholarship or grant that you're applying for. You want to ensure that you're listing out in detail what the goals are. Um, if you are applying for the travel scholarship, how does this travel scholarship help you later on? What kind of impact are you going to have if attending this conference? Um, if you are presenting or wanting to do research, we want to ensure that your abstract is following all the guidelines. Something that I see not just uh, with SACNIS, but in a lot of other applications is that the guidelines are there to help you with structuring out how to apply. Um, and if you're not following those guidelines, that can cause some issues with your application. Awesome. That is great advice. Um, we've got another question here in the chat about the travel scholarship. Can international students apply for the travel scholarship? So the SACNIS travel scholarship is grant funded. So because it's grant funded, we are limited to only funding participants who are U.S. citizens or permanent residents. However, SACNIS does occasionally get donations and um, yeah, uh, additional scholarship opportunities. So we still encourage you to submit an application, um, but ultimately if we don't receive any, any additional funding, we won't be able to, to support the um, scholarship for you if you are not a US citizen or permanent resident. But um, you know, we still, like I said, we still encourage you to get that information in there because um, we may be, able, may, may be able to help you out in the long run eventually anyways. Um, another good question here. Uh, since the conference is in October, can we limit the abstract to text until we obtain the data? This is a great question. So um, a lot of folks are still working on their research year round, right? Like you're not only limited to doing that research right now. We, we want to know as much information about the research you're working on um, as possible. Um, but if you don't have finalized results, if you have some anticipated results, that's fine. You can totally share that information with us and be able to speak to what you're working on in your abstract. Um, we don't need any graphics in your um, abstract. In fact, um, you might get docked points if you provide an image with graphics. So uh, just we really just want that abstract text and sentence form. Um, but again, if you're still working on that research and you haven't finished it yet, that's totally OK. Just be able to speak to, to the anticipated results. You guys are giving us great questions. This is awesome. All right, we've got a couple more here. Elizabeth, do you want to go ahead? Yes, yeah, so we also have some in the chat right now. I'm going to oh, pull awesome. one out. Uh, someone has heard some mixed perspectives about psychology being or not being a part of STEM. Is clinical psychology considered a STEM discipline? Great question. Yes, clinical psychology is considered a STEM discipline, and we welcome psychology students. SACNIS is multidisciplinary, and uh, we are hoping to continue to grow all of our all of our different 
disciplines um, and clinical psychology is one of them. We receive research presentation applications every year in clinical psychology. Another question, what if I were to submit both an abstract and a poster session? Can I do that? You can only submit one. So I know some other conferences do permit for you to submit for both an oral or for a poster presentation, but unfortunately at SACNIS, we only can permit you to do one. We have so many students that we help serve and we have so many students eager to present their research. So as such, we can only get one presentation type per presenter. Now, if you are a graduate student and you have selected a uh, to give an oral presentation, but you're not ultimately selected for the oral presentation. Say you apply for it, but ultimately you're not accepted into it. You may still be considered for the poster presentation. Um, we will be able to provide, provide you with that information once the application process is going and um, once we get into the notification round. Awesome questions. Um, if I've attended a conference before, not NDI STEM, does it affect my chances in the selection process? No, we don't care. We are so excited that you've already had the opportunity to present your research and attended a previous conference, and we want you to come to ours too. It's totally fine. Um, your chances are not decreased in any way by having attended or even presented at a previous conference. Awesome. Keep those questions coming, everyone. These are great. I see another one here. If we're interested in the color retreat, should we apply to both programs or how do we navigate this? This is a great question. You can totally apply to both color and to the travel scholarship uh, program. Here at SACNIS, we communicate with each other and we work together really, really closely. So we will be able to uh, work together to figure out which program is gonna be best suited for you, whether it's gonna be color or the travel scholarship um, program, assuming you get accepted to both of those. So feel free, don't limit yourself. You can apply to both opportunities. Oh, good question. Are there any plans to include post -backs or post-docs in the travel awards in the future? For the travel scholarship application, right now we're grant funded under the uh, NIGMS uh, R13 grant, um, which kind of gives us some limitations. So unfortunately for the R13 grant right now, as it stands, we can only accept undergraduate and graduate students. Um, if you haven't already, um, there, if you haven't heard of it already, we do um, work with Google on a Google conference scholarship. Uh, which is an additional opportunity that isn't limited to undergraduate and graduate students. It's open to postbacs, it's open to postdocs, um, and it provides funding just like the SACNIS Travel Scholarship does to attend NDI STEM in the fall. There's lodging, there's airfare, and um, registration for the conference included in that as well, um, and I can provide a link to that in just a moment here. Awesome. Keep those questions coming. We're happy to continue answering while you've got us here. Great question. Applying to present and applying for the travel scholarship are two different applications. Yes, they are. And they're independent of each other. You're not required to apply for both, but we encourage it. It's awesome if you get the opportunity to present your research at the conference and also attend, but they are two separate applications. Um, like I mentioned, independent of one another. Acceptance for one doesn't impact your acceptance of the other. Yes, you can apply for both the SACNIS Travel Scholarship and the Google Scholarship. Another great question that's in here too. Um, for the uh, Travel Scholarship, if you ultimately get accepted for the Google Conference Scholarship, we would ask that you notify us um, in that case so that, you know, you would lose your eligibility for the SACNIS Travel Scholarship in that case. But, um, you know, we encourage applying where you can to get that funding to attend the conference. A question about that. Can you get double funded? No, that's a great question. You cannot get double funded. You have to only have one funding space, basically, one funding opportunity. So say you want to participate in the color program or you get the Google Conference Scholarship, you do just have to pick one. Uh, we won't be able to double fund you that way. But the nice thing about that Google Conference Scholarship, the nice thing about the SACNIS Travel Scholarship, and the nice thing about the uh, color program is they all provide you with that conference registration, lodging, and round-trip airfare to attend NDI STEM. 
I see this one in the chat. If I don't have preliminary data, can I still apply for a poster presentation? Yes. However, do keep in mind, the less data you have to speak to, the harder it's going to be to, to you know, provide a completed abstract text. Uh, we still recommend doing it anyways. Um, you know, if you're not applying, you're already answering that question for yourself, right? It's a no if you don't apply. But if you do apply, then you have the chance to also receive feedback from our volunteer reviewers, and you have the opportunity to present that research for a poster presentation at the conference. Um, and if you're going to be continuing that data um, or continuing that research rather throughout the rest of the year, speak to that, speak to the fact that it is an ongoing research program. Awesome. If we apply for multiple grants and are accepted to one, who should we contact about the other funding opportunities? So if you're accepted into a different funding opportunity outside of SACNIS, but you've also applied for the travel scholarship and you find out you've been accepted for the travel scholarship, you're, you're going to contact me. Um, travel scholarships at SACNIS.org is the best way to get in touch um, regarding the travel scholarship application or any other funding source. Um, information that you've gotten uh, or received, I'll be able to help you kind of walk through what what we can do with you and 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 kind of the next steps for proceeding with your travel scholarship. Awesome. What is the difference between oral and poster presentations? This is great. So, uh, the oral presentation is um, for graduate students only. Um, and postdocs only, I should mention. Uh, so that is separate from the poster presentations, which you'll see in the exhibit hall at the conference. For the oral presentations, you and other students will be uh, separated into rooms based off of your discipline, and you'll be given a little bit of extra time um, for an oral presentation on your research that is accompanied by a PowerPoint presentation. Um, you'll be in a session room as opposed to being in the uh, exhibit hall, where which is where the poster presentations are. They each have their own kind of time limit for the presentation, um, but all of our presentations are judged by our volunteer mentor judges at the conference. Awesome. Another question, Emily. So I'm hearing color, I'm hearing travel scholarships, and I've also heard PLI somewhere in the mix with all of this. What what are all these programs? Awesome question. So these are all separate independent programs that help uh, bring you to NDI STEM. The travel scholarship application is separate from color and it's separate from PLI. PLI is separate from color and color is separate from PLI as well. PLI is a uh, postdoc leadership institute. Wait, is that right? It's, it's a leadership program. I'm going to get the name totally wrong with this, but it's a leadership program that takes place at NDI STEM. And Color is um, another program that takes place at NDI STEM that's separate for our chapter members, for uh, the chapters with SACNIS. Travel scholarship, you are not required to be a chapter member, as previously mentioned. You're not required to be in these other programs. It is truly just to fund your attendance to join NDI STEM. Now, we do have some other requirements of you once you accept that travel scholarship, but you'll get to find that information out if you get selected. But these are all separate uh, funding opportunities to attend NDI STEM. Great question. To reiterate, PLI, color, those are leadership programs. Uh, yes. The travel scholarship is for anyone who wants to attend these programs. So I'm not postdoc and I'm yes. not a chapter officer. You got it. Awesome. Exactly. Awesome. These are great questions. And it's, we have so many different opportunities at SACNIS. We're so excited that so many of you want to know about all of them and join us at NDI STEM this year. Um, so if someone recently joined SACNIS, are they also eligible to apply for presenting research or travel scholarships? Yes, you do not need to be um, have been a SACNIS member for years and years and years in order to participate in these programs. You do have to be a SACNIS member to uh, apply for the travel scholarship and research presentation opportunities as they are opportunities open for our dues paying members. But you don't have had you don't need to have been like a long time SACNIS member in order to participate. Um, so please, even if you're new to us, join us at NDI STEM, apply for these programs and for these opportunities. 
great question about how many undergrad and graduate students attend. Um, it varies each year. And in fact, you can check out our conference by the numbers uh, resource on the conference webpage for the exact information on that. We can drop a link in the chat here um, in just a moment. Um, but we are pleased that most of our attendees at the NDI STEM conference are um, our undergrad and grad students. Awesome. How long does the oral presentation last? The oral presentation is about 15 minutes long. Um, so each presenter will have about 15 minutes. Um, this is subject to change, but it's about 15 minutes to present your research um, in those session spaces at the conference. And how many scholarships do you award for the conference? It varies every year. We accept about 15% of our 15 to 20% of our applications. Um, so it's a few hundred uh, scholarships each year. But um, like I said, it kind of varies each year. And, and that's also subject to change. Is Q&A included in the oral presentation time? Yes, great question. We want to make sure that you have the opportunity to answer questions to the audience um, when you're giving your oral presentation. So you usually have about five minutes at the end of your presentation to your at the end of your 10 to 15 minutes for um, a, for the Q&A. Uh, depending on the number of presenters that you have in your room, that can vary, but you typically have about five minutes to answer questions at the end of your presentation. Does the Google scholarship need a recommendation letter? I searched and I cannot see if it is required. To my knowledge, no. I don't believe you need a letter of recommendation to submit the uh, Google Conference scholarship, but um, you can always reach out to the team at Google um, who handles the conference scholarships to confirm, but their application process is a little bit different than ours and they don't require a letter of recommendation to my knowledge. If you will be between graduating from bachelor and grad school or gap year, can you still apply and participate? Yes. If you are um, in between graduating or um, in the application process, you can still present your research at the conference and you can still absolutely attend the NDI STEM conference. But for the travel scholarship, you do have to be currently enrolled um, or enrolled at, at the time of the conference in the fall in order to receive the travel scholarship here getting lots of questions that is great if I get a travel scholarship this time does that limit my availability to apply for a travel grant again or for a presentation grant in the future um, so as a reminder the research presentation opportunity does not include funding for the conference if you are looking for funding to attend NDI STEM you will need to submit the uh, travel scholarship application um, in addition to the research presentation application, um, but your previous attendance for the travel scholarship, we provide in that um, QR code here. Let me let me go back to it so you guys can check it out and um, scan it in case you didn't get the uh, opportunity to earlier. Um, let's see here right here. Um, and the QR code right here, go ahead and scan that. That's going to give you uh, access to the travel scholarship details information, which also includes a breakdown of the uh, selection process. Now, if you have attended the SACNIS NDI STEM conference under a travel scholarship in the past, um, whether that was for the digital conference or for the in-person conference, your uh, priority will be lower than somebody who has never attended the NDI STEM conference, but it doesn't mean you won't get selected for the travel scholarship entirely. Um, as long as you're still submitting a strong application, you'll, you'll still be considered for the travel scholarship. Um, and for the research presentation as well, um, kind of similarly, we prioritize first time presenters. However, previous presentation status does not mean you won't get to um, present at the NDI STEM conference. You'll still be considered if you have a strong application there as well. Oh, there's a good question here. Elizabeth, you might be able to help answer this one. Um, besides presenting our research, what else is available to attendees at the conference? Oh, I love this question so much. Uh, not only is SACNIS and NDI STEM the largest multidisciplinary, they're also the largest multicultural STEM diversity conference and organization here in the United States. So we offer so many great programs. I, for one, like I said, I'm the Native Initiatives Coordinator, so we do have our annual powwow. 
We have our cultural and indigenous marketplace. We have the pachanga as well. And the pachanga is more like a awesome party that we have in order to celebrate everybody coming back together, the La Familia coming together uh, to celebrate, of course, 51 years now of Sackness celebrations. Uh, additionally, we have an exhibit hall. So if you are ever interested in interviewing or getting yourself out there and breaking into the industry, we have people there to talk to you. You can get mentorships, uh, which I highly recommend if you're interested in being partnered with a SACMIS member or exhibitor, they can actually sign up for being a mentor and they can talk with you and help you mentor, help mentor you through your academic journey. We also have conversations with scientists, which I believe is around the same thing. There's just so much to do. And the fact that NDI STEM is only three days is a huge shock. And we did have a question earlier, where is NDI STEM gonna be this year? We are going to be in Phoenix, Arizona this year. So the, we're going to be entering the ancestral homelands of the Akuma Atham, Peeposh, Maricopa people. There's 23 federally state recognized tribes, but there are 23 tribes in total in Arizona. So there's going to be a lot of cultural things that you can also participate in during that time frame. I feel like I can go on and on about how wonderful NDI STEM is. Also, being a Phoenician. Uh, I can talk about how wonderful being in Phoenix will be. We are so excited to be in Phoenix this year. We're going to have so much to do at the NDI STEM conference. Like Elizabeth said, you've got opportunities for mentorship. You've got opportunities for um, meeting with our exhibitors. And some of those opportunities um, you can get into right now. So like signing up for the research presentation and travel scholarship applications. Um, that is a great way for you to get involved, of course, at the conference. We'll also have some more uh, mentorship opportunities at the conference, as previously mentioned, like our one-on-one -on -one mentorship workshop. Um, so, you know, keep an eye out on our website, keep an eye out on those emails. We'll be sharing more information about what to expect at, at NDI STEM soon. I've got, I see one more question here. If we are awarded the travel scholarship and we know someone else who is attending, can we request to be roomed with them? Unfortunately, we're not able to accommodate roommate, roommate requests at NDI STEM um, or for the conference with the travel scholarship. However, um, we do make our roommate pairings um, based on gender identity. Um, they're not completely randomized. We do it based on gender identity. And if you have any specific questions or concerns, please, please, please do not hesitate to reach out to me. Travel scholarships at, at sacnus.org. Happy to talk you through it um, and, you know, answer any additional questions that you may have. Well, we have more time. Don't be shy. Please ask any last minute questions that you may have. This is the time. And of course, you are welcome to email us later after after today's webinar if you've got any additional questions that come up for you later while you all ponder some questions i just wanted to let everyone know i dropped a link in the chat tell us how we did is this another vital resource do emily and i have to come back on and talk more about these applications <laughs> um, you will also be receiving an email from one of us regarding the of course the survey but also another question that we received earlier was how can I access this awesome vital resource again? How can I hear that wonderful voice of Elizabeth, the Native Initiatives Coordinator? <laughs> we actually are recording this webinar to be posted on our YouTube channel. Um, you can find us at youtube.com forward slash SACNIS uh, to see not only this webinar, but all of the webinars that we have recorded in the past. We have some wonderful content there. I knew I do know that we have a application walkthrough already on there, but we needed to revitalize that again. Um, That's right. highly, yeah, exactly. We highly recommend connecting with SACNIS, not just at the conference, but year round. We offer our men, members annual programming, year round programming, but we also have a fantastic social media presence, both on X, formerly known as Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook and LinkedIn, where we share way more information and awesome ways to, for you to also share and help us in achieving true diversity in STEM. Awesome. Well, I'm not seeing any additional questions. As mentioned before, please don't hesitate to reach out to um, myself, travel scholarships at sacnus.org, presentations at sacnus.org. And I even have a third way to get in touch with me. 
emilyp at sacnus.org. So you've got three different ways to get in contact with me. If you've got any questions, I'm here to answer them. And of course, you may reach out to our wonderful Native Initiatives Coordinator, Elizabeth Johnson, um, at Elizabeth, E-L-I-S-A-B-E-T-H at sacnus.org. Um, and yeah, we are here. We're here to help you. Um, and as a reminder, the research presentation and travel scholarship application opportunities are open to our dues paying members, specifically that student level or postdoc level. Um, so if you're not already, we invite you to become a SACNIS member. Being a SACNIS member uh, provides you access to all of that online community, like Elizabeth mentioned. And another big part of that is as a SACNIS members do or do members paying member, um, that was a very difficult thing for me to say. We also have career con available right now yes. so if you apply or even register to become a member today the application closes this friday so definitely include that because again this is not just a one-time conference organization we have programming year round right now right. we do have our moss program currently ongoing and then we also have career con applications upcoming Yes, and keep an eye out because we also have another cohort that will be opening for that MOSS program, our mentorship activation for students, um, and that will be opening April 29th. So keep an eye out. We'll have another opportunity for you to get some of that year-round non-conference programming that we offer with SACNIS. Um, so two ways to support webinars like this, make a donation in any amount if you can at SACNIS.org. Your donation goes towards more virtual programming like this, as well as other year-round programming, like with chapters and with leadership, color, and PLI, like we've discussed earlier. You can visit SACNIS.org side slash donate to make your do donation. And like we mentioned earlier, like Elizabeth said, we want to hear from you. Um, we will send you that uh, survey after today's webinar. Let us know how we did. Let us know if you want to hear our beautiful voices one more time. Please help support SACNIS. Thank you so much for joining today's webinar. This concludes Charting Futures, SACNIS Scholarships, and a Research Application Walkthrough. Thank you again for taking the time to join us. I hope to see those applications trickling in, and um, we hope to see you in Phoenix this year. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.